Hey, hey, Tony Gassens here, popping in with another lesson from IWU, Independent Woman University. And what you have to understand about the word independent, independent does not mean single until death. Independent means you can stand on your own two feet and it is a period of time in your life on the maturity continuum where you go from dependent to independent, to interdependent. Independent is not a negative word. It's not a bad word. It's a good word. It means you can stand on your own two feet, 10 toes down. If you got 10 toes, you got less than that. You stand on what you got on, but you are independent. And then when you attract someone, now when you get married, you are interdependent, not codependent. You are interdependent which is another positive word, but you must first be independent before you can be interdependent because no independent man wants a dependent or a codependent woman. A independent man wants a independent woman. The two court date, get married, and then they become interdependent, which is we share money, it all goes to a joint account, then the woman gets her spending money, the man gets his spending money, and all the bills are paid out of the joint account. Everything happens, the, the woman can see all the money, the man can see all the money. It's no, this is my money, this is your money, this is our money, you married, because one person may make 90,000 and another person may make 10,000, but when you marry, you won. So understand that independent does not mean a curse or a death sentence or like it's some bad word. It is a good thing and it's what you have to be and need to be until you meet your husband. So understand that. Now in this space, in your preparation, you know, your preparation is really like your come up. It's really where you grow in you. We talked about healing, where you're doing the healing. And understand this, you gotta listen to the message holistically. And just because you don't hear the trigger word that you want to hear does not mean the message does not apply. I saw someone say, can you talk about uh, guilt or something like that? That's a part of healing. So the same, thing that I would speak on about feeling guilt, that is the first video, when you heal. Because see, when you heal, that will remove your guilt, your fear, your doubt, when you heal. Healing meaning learning what you did wrong, learning what should be done right, getting new knowledge. And see, fear and guilt comes from a lack of knowledge. It comes from a lack of confidence. It comes from a lack of healing. It comes from pain. So when you heal that, that's how you grow. Now in your preparation phase, what you have to realize is that there are good men, but see a good man is looking for his equivalent or greater, meaning you may be a little bit better and vice versa. A woman is looking for her equivalent or greater in a man, but what this means is you have to have your best foot forward. So you have to be pushing yourself because what you do in your life, it represents who you are. It represents your mindset. So if you are comfortable working at the call center for $10 an hour and your job is to collect debt, that's a starting point. But you can't just say, this is what I'm going to be doing for life. Now, if you're trying to become the manager, the supervisor, and then a partner or owner of a similar company or to get your credit up and get your savings up to where you could buy the building that y'all sitting in there calling out of, then that's totally different. But you have to see a part of healing and changing your thoughts, changing your mindset is setting new goals for yourself. Because you may come from a place or area where the goals weren't that high, to where nobody goes to college. You maybe didn't go to college, or if you did go to college, but the goal could be be overworked and underpaid. Not a written goal, it's not spoken, but 
is still what's happening in your family. So you have to go beyond that. And, and what you'll notice is when you look around, you will notice women who don't have your body or don't have your fashion sense, don't have your style, but she has a grind that has given her the wherewithal, the hustle to go start a business and she makes six figures, seven figures. And this other woman could be cute and all, but she set up for the call center. Instead of just letting that be her launching pad, her starting point, she got complacent there. And she didn't go on Saturdays to cosmetology school or to the tax preparer school or to the credit repair certification or to the life coach certification. She didn't do anything outside of that call center or driving for Uber. And she said, this is all I'm going to be. Well, when an independent good man who has goals and he has six figure goals, seven figure goals, when he comes along and he sees that woman, he's like, uh, she's looking for somebody she could ride off of or her, her thoughts too limited. Her vision for her life is too limited. And that's going to rub off on my kids. That's a generational curse that she bonded, that she in bondage to. And I, I, I don't have, I don't want to raise her. I don't want to change that because that's who she is and I don't want to be fighting her to do that and I remember one time when I was in college I was kind of talking to this young lady that I knew in high school and remember what I was talking about in my last video how I had a girlfriend and she was dating the older guy and one trying to do nothing with me but was dealing with the older guys well that same mentality led her to no college and no she ended up becoming a dancer on, on the pole now, not ballet and ballerina now, on the pole. And from there, I remember one time talking to her and she said, listen, I don't have anything I can offer you. And I was like, wow. She said, I feel bad. I don't even want to talk to you. Don't want to deal with you because, you know, you're in college. You're doing big things. You're playing football. She was like, some days I go to work and I make $12. And I was like, wow. So it was a thing to where for me, I want I want to focus on that. I was so young. I didn't really care about what a woman does, you know, how much money she make or anything like that. I didn't care about none of that because I didn't have that mindset. I, I wasn't there. But for y'all today, this way back 2002, you said I mean, 2003 It's 2020 It's 17 years later. So for y'all today, it's so much technology. It's so much opportunity to where you could get on Instagram and you know women who's selling makeup from Alibaba. Y'all know Alibaba.com. This ain't no sponsorship either. But that makeup that y'all be buying from them people, them hair drops, them hair drops, a lot of them hair drops is olive oil. They got on Alibaba and ordered the bottle, ordered the bottle. Order the bottle and Alibaba talking about they done formulated this hair growth oil over there. Child, that's olive oil. Child, you go up the street to the grocery store and get you some olive oil. Get on Alibaba.com, order you the little bottles and just pour you some olive oil in there. And it got the little top, they got the little drip in there. But it's women that you see making millions of dollars selling hair drops, selling uh, mayonnaise to go on your head, selling lace fronts selling bundles selling nail polish selling lipstick chapstick uh selling makeup selling waist trainers selling leggings bras head scarves bonnets you see what i'm saying it's so much opportunity out here you literally go create your own line on alibaba.com i got my barber a uh, beard brush with a beard comb with the little silk zip, zip tie bag, little silk bag that you could put the brush and the comb in and the beard oil to keep your beard moisturized. I got them all of that right there off of Alibaba. Off of Alibaba. Oh yeah, I'm a business consultant. Oh yeah, you ain't know that? And that's how I do business. I ordered me, you know the little keychain that you put on your, with the little crystal. It's a little crystal and it got the little logo of the car. Like if you drive a Ford, I ordered me a hundred of those off Alibaba for $200. And they shipped them over here to me. 
in the box, a little blue box, a little velvet in there, and the keychain sitting in there, and got the little crystal with the Ford sign in there, and I was going to make me a, a shop on Etsy selling customized Ford keychains because anytime I get a car, I Google customized such and such keychain, and that's what came up, that little keychain. So I went on my trusted Alibaba.com, and I find a keychain. Them keychains are a dollar a piece. I paid $12. Uh, when I had my Maserati, I paid $34 for that keychain. They sell it on there for a dollar. I say somebody paid a dollar, paid $2 with shipping included, and then hit me for $34. They made $32. They sell 100 of those a month. The marketing, Etsy doing the marketing. Etsy, Etsy.com, where I bought it from, they market the product for the person. I say they do a hundred of those a month. They make it thirty two hundred dollars a month. You ain't got to go to work. That's more than school teachers make. Sitting online selling keychain. You see what I'm saying? It's opportunity out here. So that's what you see a lot of these men trying to get to. They trying to get to that. So when they start to look at the woman, they don't want no complacent woman. They don't want no woman that's selling. So see, this is the thing. A lot of women say, oh, I want a good man. You just got to realize a good man elevate. A good man elevate. He in the gym working out. He in his business grinding. A good man elevate. He don't want He don't want to carry you. Now, see, here's the thing about men. This is what you got to understand about men now. Men will sit you down. A man will take a six-figure woman and sit her down. Allow her to be a stay-at-home mom without without giving her any pressure. Like, listen, you want to be home with the kids until they three, four, five, whatever. You want to stay home for good. You could do that. It's not that he wants. It's not that the man wants a good man wants her money. It's that he wants to know that she doesn't feel entitled to being rescued or to being carried. So literally, there are women who were doctors and lawyers and all kind of stuff got sat down. After going to school for 12 years to become a doctor, end up using that degree for two, three years before being married and then deciding to stay home to be hands-on with their children. Spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to become a doctor to then retire and become a stay-at-home mother. But what that did is that secured her husband because of her ambition, because of her wherewithal, her go-getter attitude, her hustler mentality, it put her on another level. So she was seen differently than the complacent woman who settled for a dead-end job without doing other stuff outside of that dead-end job it's all right to have a dead-end job if that's where you got to start at because that's where your education is at and your education is there because that's where your family was because it's generational curses and you just trying to get further than your parents got so it's okay to start somewhere but you still got i started working in a group home making eight dollars and fifty cents an hour what attracted me to my wife outside of her personality and all of that, she was a biomedical science major. I say, you got to have some nerve. You hear me? I'm over here struggling in criminology. You in what? How you say that? Me what? Medecular? I couldn't even pronounce biomedical science. I'm saying, so what you want to be? A doc? A doctor? I started, I, I, when she did that, I just saw uh, daddy daycare. I saw myself being at the house with the kids. I said, ooh, he has a little bit of stay at home father. You hear me? Yes, Lord. Thank you. I finally met me some money. Yes, Lord. Thank you. And I talked to good men. And who good men now, they're going to they gonna bust their butt. Now, I bust my butt. And it flipped on me. I tell my wife what I was thinking. I'm kind of joking, so don't take that too serious. I was jokingly serious, nah, because at that point right there, I was like, all right, I can't compete with that. This old criminology degree, I'm not going to be able to compete with the doctor. I might as well just settle that I'm going to be able to stay at home dad. And so I, I was trying to wrap my head around 
and let go of my ego to say, all right, I'm going to stay home. I'll be a stay-at-home dad because she's going to have to work 60 to 80 hours a week as a doctor. She happened to get pregnant before she got her undergrad degree. And then after having our son, she still went to get her master's, which was like a one-year trial type program that was to emulate med school so you can see if you got what it take to get through med school she did that and in that program you get a master's degree of science masters of science and her friends her classmates they went on to med school after that but she said i am a mother now and a wife and i don't want to my son is special needs like he had you know a lot of allergies just a lot of issues, asthma, just a lot going on, stay sick. And she said, I don't want to have to go to med school and have to be studying 16 hours a day and can't be a mother and have to put this all on my husband, who I see clearly cannot be the best or be the level that I'm going to be as a parent. And she was right. And so she made that decision. And I say, baby, you know, we could go where you want to go, wherever med school at. We could do this now. We could make this happen because I love me now. I'm still trying to be a stay-at-home dad. I'm like, come on now. Let's keep going now. Hey, come on. I'm, I'm about to drop out of college now. All right. You see, I was just in the street selling drugs. Like, come on now. Let's get this doctor. Let's go and be a doctor now. But God had other plans. But it was the fact that she had that ambition that made her even more attractive to me. And I noticed that when I'm dealing, when I'm talking to men, these are good men who are going to pay the bills, who are going to pay for everything, who are going to sit their wife down if she wants to sit down. Totally fine with it. But they say, man, she, hey, man, she a, she a doctor. Or, hey, man, she a, she an engineer. Or, hey, man, she, she a, a scientist. She do research. Or, hey, man, she a executive for this corporation. You know, hey, she did, she that. And men be bragging about that because it's like, I got me a go-getter, ambition, hustler. The way if something happened to me, she could pick up and keep going, keep things going if I'm sick or what have you. And so I done seen, I remember seeing an athlete to where he sat his wife down because he was playing pro ball. But then when he finished playing pro ball, she picked back up and the kids were older, she picked back up her six-figure career. And when his money stopped, now her money picked back up. Now they were able to still keep a certain level of lifestyle. And so as a woman, you got to understand that although you want a husband, you got to get prepared and positioned to make sure you can stand on your own two feet. So in this space, this is where we really focusing on the three B's. This is where we're focusing on the three B's, which this is what I made up, all right, writing a book. I made this up while I was writing. And a lot of what, you, what y'all read in my book, I made it up right then while I was writing it because I just write my book straight through without stopping. I write five days and the book done, okay? So the three B's came while I was writing the book. And I broke it down to brain, feeding your mind. You feeding your mind, you're getting knowledge. Watching these videos, you're getting knowledge of love and relationships, the way men think, the way men move, you're getting that knowledge, all right? That's the brain. The brand. That's where you're working on your career. You're working on your image. You're working on everything that a brand is. You're working on your attitude, your personality, and then the body. you eating right. you exercising. You're doing what you can do. Now, your body going to be is different body types. But as long as you're doing what you can do, that is a healthy lifestyle, then that's where you're supposed to be at. Brain, brand, body. The three B's. All right. Hear somebody else say it. They done, they done uh, stole it from me. And when you focus there, everything, you know, you can say, oh, what about faith? My relationship. That's your brain. That's your brand. That fit in there, too. When you're working, reading books, you also reading the Holy Bible or whatever you want to read, but you're reading that Holy Bible. That's your, that's your brain. You're feeding your mind, your spirituality, your heart. You're getting your faith up, your brain. That's also a part of your brain. And that's also part of your body, your spiritual temple. Your body is a temple. 
So you making better decisions with your body. What's what you putting your body, what you putting into your body. Not just being vegan. You need to be vegan from this here too. All right. Cause that old meat leg, that's what we call that third leg, the men, that third leg, that swing. Okay, that's a meat leg. You need to be vegan from that too. All right. You vegan over here. You ain't eating no sausage over here, but then you <laughs> singing on the microphone, got all kind of sausage over here. You see what I mean? That don't go together. Stay off your back. You need to be vegan in that bedroom and get that meat out you. You see what I'm saying? So now you working on brain, brand, body, and you put this all together and listen to me. Listen to me. Oh. See, this is what I'm tired of. So you want us to be perfect. So basically, you want us to be perfect. So because I got a little extra meat on my hips, you trying to say I can't handle man. And because I don't read my Bible, I can't handle. So you want us to be perfect, and you just want us to take this old sorry men, just take them as they are, and you want us to build the men. See, this right here is not fair. No. Did I say that? All right, then. So get out your feelings. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get off your behind and get to work. Because when I see these here men, when I see the good men, listen to me. When I, see, when I see good men, they go to the gym three to seven days a week. They read a new book every month, if not every week. They go to church. If they can't go to church, you know, because of the situation, got to have that mask on, breathing in all that CO2. They at the house in their Bible. They in their Bible every day, read one to two chapters a day. You know, supping with the Lord, meditating with the Lord. They is on their grind on their business, trying to scale their business to six figures, then trying to come up with a seven figure plan. This is what good men doing. And the good men out there. And they working towards that. So you have to focus on your preparation and working on you. And this one, this one of the things that I notice most often with independent women. See, independent really mean. You could stand on your own two feet. You pay your own bills. That's really, at the end of the day, that's really what independent means. Independent thinker, independent doer, independent worker. You can stand on your own two feet. It's not that you don't want help. It's not that you don't need help. It's that you can hold it down if you need to. But this is the thing that I notice with most independent women. They lacking one of the B's. Okay, you got to have the three B's. You just can't have the body. Or you just can't have the brains. Or you just can't have the brand. You got to complete the three. You see what I'm saying? So when I met my wife, the brain. Biomedical science major. Very smart. Read 600 words a minute. Articulate. I could tell she was well read, well studied on her ground. The brand. She was in school to be a doctor. That career, that's the brand, the body. She ran track at the time, so she loved to work out. She worked out. She still had meat on her bones now. She still had, you know, when, you know, as a woman, you sit down, a lot of your weight go to your stomach, you sit down, and it going to wrap, folding up and everything. You know, that's men too. We, I'm not saying you got to look like no Olympian. You ain't got to look like Usain Bolt, you know, a Jackie Joyner Cursor, no Olympian. You just have to be taking care of you. I still, I got weight on me. My wife, she still had meat on her bone back then, but she was working out. Nah, and so I say, hey, and body wasn't in my idea. It wasn't like, oh, boom, 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 everything, everything. She really ain't had no whole lot of booty or nothing. But that didn't matter because she was taking care of herself. So that's just how your body built. You not built to be ham heavy. You built to have more bite than booty. And then eventually, after a couple of kids, after that gym, got more booty. She don't necessarily like no lot of booty. So me, I do. She don't necessarily like all that because that ain't all that cute to her. So I let her be her. And I didn't say, oh, because you don't have the exact shape booty that I want, I'm leaving. A grown man not going to do that. Because she could have said, Lord, I would have wished he was a couple inches taller. Ugh, 5'10". I put on some heels. I'm looking at his top of his scalp. 
You see what I mean? She could have said that, but she said, no, I'm going to let you, I'm going to take you 5'10", you know, because she's like 5'7 and a half, 5'7 and three quarters. And so when we flat footed, I'm taller than her. And, but she put on some heels, she's looking at the, the crown of my head from the sole of my feet. And so she could have said that too. But see, when you mature, you're not going to do that. You're just looking to see that this person is working. And see, potential is different than production. Sometimes people say, oh, don't date potential. You got to look at the definition of the word potential. Potential is a good thing. But see, potential produces. If, if you're not producing, then that's not potential. That's posturing. That's perpetrating. You see what I mean? So potential is actually something of substance. So if I know my wife like to work out, then I know that and she gonna be working out and she's not just gonna kick back and just eat cakes and cookies all day and just let everything go to where I'm gonna have to lose her at 40 from you know eating habits. I know she's gonna take care of her body. If I know she like to read and she feed her mind, I know that she's gonna stay sharp, her mind gonna stay sharp, she's gonna be articulate. My wife does not read self-help books. She just read. She read fiction books. You know, she just she, her books entertaining. She don't need self help books because she's not trying. She's not working in that space. And I have to realize that and understand that I need self help books because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm working in that space. She need relaxation from all the you know mundane life of being a wife and a mom and having that same routine. She get a good book and it just help her mind escape. But at least let me know that she like to feed her mind, meaning keep her brain active. And it's not nothing. It's not detrimental. My wife does not watch any reality television. So what you got to understand is a real man. He when when it comes to the brain, he's looking at what you putting in your mind. If if you are addicted to love and hip hop, uh, lust and bad music, better yet, if you are addicted to Atlanta house ex-wives and Atlanta house girlfriends and Atlanta house situationships. That's not attractive. That is to a good man. That's repelling. You see what I mean? Because he's not going to be sitting there watching that kind of stuff because he on his grind. So if he watching TV, he was trying to watch Shark Tank. You see what I mean? To see what people getting for their businesses because he building business. He trying to watch, you know what I mean? So what you watching, it have to be either healthy relaxation. You know, you better off watching a cooking show. Like that's, that's healthy relaxation. It's not detrimental to your spiritual and mental and emotional growth. But see, it's so many women in their independent space that's saying, I want a good man, but you're not attractive to a good man. Because if you curse like a sailor, and this, and you want a man of God, a man of God is not going to mix the sacred, his sacred lifestyle with the profane. So a man of God not going to curse like a sailor. Now he might stump his toe and you get a word out of him. You get, you hear old cuss word. Now y'all might get married and, and then in Mr. Nasty time, you might hear a couple of little words, but he ain't just walking around F this, F that, S this, F that's this and this and this. Because you just say you want a man of God. So if you want a man of God, the way y'all be looking for him, he not going to be cursing like you. So if you using the F word and the S word, every time you do that, he can fill a throw up in his mouth. You see what I mean? So you have to understand that. So if he in the gym and you sitting now, another little bite of the hip be jerking. Ooh, I love beef jerky. Oh my goodness. Do you have Oreos? Let me have a couple of them Oreos. Ooh, I need my red velvet cupcake. Ooh, with the with the cream icing. Oh my goodness. With the cream cheese icing. Oh, thank you so much. And he at the gym and he drank his protein shake. He's he's like, okay, we're not compatible. We're not compatible. We we on two different paths. You see what I'm saying? So, and I literally, it's it's so many women in the independent space. That then literally, you know, sitting there eating ham hocks and chitlins and then saying they want a man with abs. 
that don't go together. If 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 you ain't coming close to sniffing an app, you you can't touch no app. Then you can't have that requirement because he if he got abs that means he attracted the abs so in your preparation you have to become what you're trying to attract because this is what a man understands as well a good man he trying to elevate to your level so that's why he trying to get his bread up that's why he trying to take care of his body because he know most women say i want a man that's athletic bill that's athletic bill or medium bill or muscular bill women say I want a man who earn good money meaning that we could take a vacation when we want to take a vacation we don't have to do the payment plan for it and be plan paying every month X amount of dollars with the travel agent we could just boom it's five thousand here go five thousand bomb it's paid for we could fly first class if we want to it's a little extra double the cost of the coach seat you know we could stay in a suite on the executive level instead of having to stay in the basement of the hotel with the rats and roaches we can most women have that requirement so a good man what is he doing he working for that so when you see a man locked in and he focused he trying to get his money up he trying to get his body right and i just a guy said that to me yesterday he's a guy said that to me yesterday he said hey man i'm single out here man he said man i'm out here single man i can't be out here looking bad he's like but i gotta be fit Man, hey, I'm saying he's like, man, you married. Say so you can let you can let it pack a few pounds on. He said, man, I got to be fit. I'm out here singing. I got to look good, and I got to be on my grind, man. Hey, I'm single in the city. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So I, I could understand, you know. It kind of all right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that so that's why you in the gym so much. Okay, that's why you working so hard because you single and you trying to get to the level of your wife that you want to attract and so understand that and this this in this space now now listen now listen when i step on your toes pause right there when i step on your toes let the ad let the ad play just sit there at 15 seconds i have long the ad is a lady yesterday about got blocked talking about the ads is killing the video it's all else it's just making it hard to take the information in that means the show good. That means the show good. You got to understand if the ads get on your nerve, that means the show you watching is good. Because when you watch it, Scandal, remember when Scandal used to be out? Or you be mad by the commercial. I ain't, I ain't watch Scandal, but I, I know y'all were mad by the commercial. But that's when you just get the process. So when I step on your toes, you need to be happy for that next ad. The way you could just sit there and just get that toe out. Just get that toe out and just... Oh my goodness, he stepped on your toe. Oh my goodness, he stepped all on my toe. Well, you gonna say out or oh, amen? All right, but let that process, process that, get that in your spirit, so that you can say, all right, okay, yeah, all right, I'm not a reflection of what I want to attract. I'm not on my grind. I'm not hustling out here, making things happen. I'm not. I'm settling. I'm complacent on this job, this dead end job that could let me go. Like the lady, um, Rue Ginsburg, God rest her soul. The lady passed away, and then y'all, the man up there, he trying to replace her immediately. They like, hold on, bro. Like, she ain't even, she not even resting peacefully in the ground yet, and you already talking about you nominating somebody. Like, hold on, bro. But see, that's how a job will do you. That's how a job will do you. You will be gone today. And they'll have somebody writing your job tomorrow. And so you dedicate your whole life to that job? No. Write you a book. Start you another company. Create your legacy outside of that. Now see, uh, Ruth, she left her legacy. Because her job, you know, she stood up in that job. Left her a legacy. But do you have a job that's going to leave a legacy? If you ain't got no job that's going to leave a legacy in your preparation phase, you need to be doing something that's going to help you tap into purpose. When you see me talk to these life coaches that I'm interviewing, these coaches, they telling you, well, I work, I work, but I'm, I took the certification course and I joined my mentor.life because I feel like that's my purpose. But I'm balancing my job, the dream with the job until the dream become the job. You see what I mean? So, that's what you have to be doing in your preparation. You got to look at your gifts. 
Um, take Entrepreneurship with Purpose. That's a course. It's called Entrepreneurship with Purpose on TonyGasselAcademy.com. Link in the description. You got to look at your gifts. You got to look at your skills. And you got to marry the two. Marry a gift with a skill. And then turn it into a company. Give it a name. Get a logo. Get a website. And start marketing yourself. Outside of your job. So that now... And this is the thing, and this is what I want you to understand. This is what I want to help you understand. And picture this, okay? Picture this. You listening to me right now, right? You listening to me right now. If I put on 100 pounds, will you listen to me the same way? Will you see me the same way? If I'm telling you about health and wellness, about taking care of your body, but I, and I put on 100 pounds, you're not going to hear me the same way. If, if I'm telling you to get your life in order and get yourself together, and I'm telling you how a man ought to love a woman, but you see me with a different woman on Instagram every month, you see me posing with a different woman on Instagram talking about boo, but I'm teaching you about relationships. How you going to hear me? What you going to gather from that? Now, ironically, in our world we live in, we got single matchmakers. We got single relationship coaches. We got single relationship coaches that you ain't never seen his wife. You ain't never seen a girlfriend. You ain't sniff a picture of a woman. And and the relationship coach got millions, millions of followers. That's the irony of our world. And you know why they got millions? Because it's desperate women. Desperate women following single relationship coaches hoping that if she leave enough comments, he's going to pick her. I know what y'all women be doing. I know what y'all women be doing. Some women ask me, so Tony, why, why you don't have as many followers as such and such? Because I'm married. So all the heathens, all the no good women, they don't want to be on my page because they see it ain't no chance for them to win me in the comments the win me in the dm so i just got good women following me who understand that i'm married and understand that i'm not here to pick my wife out of the comment section so the good gonna be few the heathen the loose booty 901 that's gonna be many so they're gonna follow the relationship coach that never show their wife because they're trying to get picked pick misha Okay, and so that's what you got to understand. But when you look at the difference, when you look at who you going to attract with no high school diploma, who you going to be attractive to with no high school diploma. Okay, now give yourself a high school diploma, your options change. Give yourself a college degree, your options change. Give yourself a certification or a trade, your options change. Because a good man, he may not be attracted to a woman without a high school diploma. And so for the rest of her life, she's told herself she got to work at uh, Golden Corral to bring the drink and, and point you to the silverware at Golden Corral for the rest of her life. A good man who on his grind may not be attracted to that woman. Now, this woman could have no high school diploma but she goes to cosmetology school or she goes and get certified as a tax preparer if you can do that without a GED. She go and do that. And then I know women who have, who barely finished high school, did zero college, but earn millions of dollars in their trade, in their certification, where they got certified in as entrepreneurs or as entrepreneurs who then got a product Started small, started with a t-shirt, a raggedy t-shirt that was printed downtown, selling that t-shirt $20, and it went from that t-shirt to a whole line, to a whole line of clothes. That clothes is now being worn by celebrities. It's people with that story, but they had ambition, they had vision, they had a dream. So what you have to realize is every level that you change, every level that you change, so and, and this, just, this just how it is. It's about goals. It's about dreams. So if you got a man who he looking and, and this woman say she is a um, 
uh, what you call that? Political science major. Ain't nothing wrong with that. If she say, after getting my political science undergrad, I'm going to law school because I want to be a civil attorney. That's totally different than just being a political science major. So when you have more vision, when you have more ambition, you look better. You attract a different crowd. You, you're, as you elevate, you become more attracted to different people. And I've seen women say that a man's income, rightfully so, plays a part in his attractiveness. Many women say that it is fair that they are attracted to a man who is looks challenged now that he is a millionaire. Say that that doesn't make them that was my chair now. I got hydraulics on the chair. Y'all got to forgive me. Said that that doesn't make them a gold digger because they attracted to this man who now is a millionaire because money plays into attractiveness. Now, whether that's right or wrong, I'm not here to say I don't feel like it's right, but is it true? Yes. So, Think of a millionaire man. Think of a millionaire man that you feel personally is looks challenged. Remove his millions and then you tell yourself, talk to yourself, who you think he would attract if he did not have millions. Now add his millions back and see what women he has been able to sleep with to date, to marry with his millions and his celebrity or his fame. And now you see that as your level changes, your options change. So as you grow and develop in your preparation phase, when you are preparing, see, you heal and then you prepare and then you get positioned. And position, I don't think I can talk a whole hour on positioning. But positioning meaning when you prepare and you get out the house, you in the singles group, you doing your work on your business at the coffee shop instead of at home in your room, locked up, sitting on the bed. You doing, you going out on Friday night to the live music here and listen to your little jazz. You going to the trail to run on Sunday morning after church or before church on Saturday morning. If you ain't got kids who got games and sports uh, recitals or what have you, you getting out of the house and you got a you got a schedule to where Monday night you at your entrepreneurial meetup. Wednesday night you at Bible study. Thursday night you with your life group. For, for the singles, it's men and women, it's co-ed. Friday night, you out with the live music, with the jazz. Saturday morning, you doing the trail. You hiking you hiking the mountain or you doing the trail. It's other people out there, and that's where you keep seeing the same man. He go out there every, every week at 10 a.m., he there. After he see you the fourth time, he like, wow, you really like the trail. Like, I see you all the time. It's like, we might as well get to know each other. You know, how are you? What's your name? Any family? You got kids? Like, why no? Why are you always alone? He's like, oh, I'm single. He's like, oh, wow. Well, me too. I guess that explains why I'm alone out here. So maybe we could come get together and we could come out here together sometime. So now you done met your husband because you out the house. And see, a lot of women in their independent, not independent, in their preparation phase, you independent and you preparing. Okay, you got your degree. You got your body right. You got your mind right, but you only stay home. So you sitting at the house just twiddling your thumb, waiting on the doorbell to ring. Ding! You want to go to the doorbell, open doorbell. Hey, how are you? You expect the man to be, hi, how are you? God sent me. Yeah, God sent me to your doorstep. It's like that's what you waiting on. No, you ready, you prepared, you got to get up, you got to get out of the house. You got to get a position. You prepared, now you got to get a position. Now see, the preparation is, is hard to do. So now for me, in my preparation, I had me an eight pack of abs. So 
I already knew Ann woman see that eight pack of owls and in her chest and eat her arm, they're gonna like that. And then I had my old silver tongue, all right, old mouthpiece. What you wanna be? Well, I'm a criminology major, so I'll probably be like, I really wanna be a detective, but on the spiritual side of things, I believe I wanna be a pastor one day and open up a church. Mm, you want to be a detective and a deacon and then a pastor? Okay, all right. And you got an eight bag of abs? Okay. And you got two cell phones? Okay. And you got your own car? Okay. Mm, new car, too. All right. You see what I'm saying? I had my old Impala. It was two years old. Um, I had my old, had my old five. It was, it was old seven. And, um, had me two cell phones. You know me? Had me old mouthpiece. You see what I'm saying? So I was positioned. I was prepared. And I was positioned. Now, I was faking the funk. But that changed who I could attract. Now, it was women who they just wanted me now. They were trying to get the hot rapper or the dope boy in the city who, who was touching hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. Who they weren't checking for men like myself. My wife, she was more humble. She didn't want to counting my pockets she was trying to see where your heart at what you want to be long term and so what i'm doing today i spoke it although i wasn't really actively all the way locked in but the fact that i spoke it once you speak it death and life is in the power of the tongue so right now as an independent woman who you preparing yourself you got to be speaking your speaking your dreams you got to speak your vision you got to know what you're trying to do and you got to get out there like the coach um that i interviewed coach amber she lost 108 pounds and of course you're gonna have a couple come back on you but now you got the recipe you got the formula on how to get it off you already know how to do that so when you get ready to get on that dating field and you say okay i'm gonna i keep attracting this type of man this type of man, let me go ahead and get these 10 pounds off that I know I do not like, I'm not comfortable with. Let me get these 10 pounds off, then guess what? You're gonna attract a totally different type of man. And yes, in every level, it's gonna be grown boys and it's gonna be grown men, but guess what? Your options are greater. So the men who want you at 250 pounds, they're gonna want you at 200 pounds. They're gonna want you at 170 pounds. And so now you went from 10 men who want you to 100 men who want you. And now you got to pick up a little. They lined up, putting their application in, and you get to choose. The men who wanted you with no college, with no high school diploma, going to want you with a high school diploma. And I know some of y'all said, uh-uh, some men, I want, I had a man who I lost weight and then he didn't want me no more. He 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 was ready to divorce me. He was, he was done with me. He's talking about I'm cheating on him. That's not a man. That's a grown boy. You see what I'm saying? So you're going to have always a mix of grown boys and grown men, but your options are greater. When you have no business, meaning you have not started an LLC, you and even if you selling, you know, uh, tags for t-shirts, you need to have you a LLC. And see here, this here mask I bought, if some people know how to sew. So what they taking and doing is they in the house, they sewing masks. And they sewing these here masks and they putting it on Facebook. And just to support them, they friends paying $12, $10, $15. So you know how to sew. What are you doing? Why you ain't sewing masks right now? Your grandma taught you how to sew. Your mama taught you how to sew. And you just, <sighs> I'm just so exhausted from my job. So what you doing at your job? I just file papers all day. I file papers, I check numbers, make sure everything in order, I do kind of accounting, but it just drains me. And it's like, yeah, I know how to sew, but it's like, I ain't got time to sew. Look here what my wife bought. My wife bought me a Louis Vuitton cup holder, I mean coaster. Somebody sat at their house and got them a machine that etched on this here stuff. And it ain't cost nothing. Hey, baby. Baby. Wife in the playroom. I'm about to ask her what it's called. Somebody at the house making money. Look, you know how the machine, you know the machine. You got the machine. Do this here. You know, you know the machine. You crafted like this. You were great in home economic class and art class, in wood shop class. 
You were great in that class. You love that class. You know how to cut this here. How much this here cost? Fifty dollars for four of them. Fifty dollars for four of them. Maybe she says she can't remember. That's that's because she get paid well. She don't remember what she paid for stuff. Fifty dollars for them. So just like this right here, you could be at the house. How you one of these? Be cutting it out. Be putting a little stamp on there and selling it. But you going to work, coming home, you ain't doing nothing else. But guess what? When you got your business, when you meet this man who he on his grind, he hustling, he trying to get it. He got four streams of income right now. He talked to you, what you do? So, so yeah, what do you do on a daily basis? Like, you know, what's work like? Well, I'm at the, um, I'm down to the, you know, the Comcast call center. And, you know, I've been there for five years. Oh, really? The Comcast call center? So, like, what do you do at the call, Comcast call center? Well, you know, Comcast is cable. So, like, I'm calling people and just basically saying, like, hey, you're a month late on your cable bill. Like, um, are you planning to pay this? And so it's kind of interesting. I meet all kind of people, get all kind of stories. You know, one lady stumped her toe and then couldn't go to work. So she's behind on a bill. So I could give them an extension. So it's really purposeful, too, because, like, people need cable. They really need their real house girlfriends of Atlanta. And so it's like I'm able to give them that. And in these tough times right now where everybody has to wear a mask and have hand sanitizer, it's like, for me to be able to give her a 30-day grace period so she could continue to watch her favorite shows, it's like, I'm living my purpose. And so the man, he kind of like, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, I I mean, everybody need Real House of Girlfriends. You know, it's just, you need that. And for you to be able to do that, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's the last time you hear from that man. That man got two, three businesses. Because you complacent. Understand now. I already know. Oh. I cannot believe this is supposed to be motivation. You're on here shaming people who have to work at the call center. I work at the call center. And I am the supervisor now. And I make good money. Probably make more than you make on YouTube. Listen, if the shoe fit, wear it now. If the shoe fit, wear it. If the shoe fit, run your mile in it. You hear me? Because I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm just trying to help you. Okay? What I'm trying to tell you is I used to make $8.50 an hour. Okay? I couldn't stay there though. I had to have a dream. I had to have a vision. And when I learned and found my way, I started teaching other people how to find their way. I've been seeing somebody bought the the birth your book course um, this morning. I think I think I saw somebody buy the entrepreneurship with purpose course. That's my gift, back because I found my way. So I earn a great living. I could take care of my family. I could get them anything they want. We go anywhere they want to go. But I came from eight dollars fifty cent an hour. So what I'm saying in this preparation phase, you cannot get complacent in your body if your body ain't where you want your body to be. You cannot get complacent in your knowledge if your mind really ain't where you want it to be. You cannot get complacent in your brand if you're not doing what you want to be doing to be earning money. You got to grow in that area. You got to push yourself to the next level. You got to do that. And that's what has to be non-negotiable. So don't get in your feelings because your body not where you want your body to be. That's why we not in no live room where people could be looking at you. She work at she work at the Comcast call center. Tony don't even know that I used to work with her, but now I'm a RN. She still at the call center. He talking to her. You by yourself. If you need to cry, cry. If you need to pray, pray. You need some olive oil. You need to open your Bible and read. Say, Lord, give me a vision. Lord, give me a plan. Lord, give me the confidence. Lord, give me the faith to work on myself, to grow. Because... You getting mad with God. You cussing God. Right? God say, listen, I'm, you're not waiting on me. You're not waiting on me, baby girl. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. God said, listen, I done prepared a man for you. He right over there waiting in the wings. But you got to get some things in order first. You got to get prepared for his presentation. He can't approach you 
in the state of mind that you in, in the state of body that you in, in the state of job that you in. He can't do that because that's my son. I don't already promise him the best. So I can't deliver you to him because he didn't work to get to a certain level. I need you to work to get to that level. When you get to that level, y'all going to meet. I'm going to cross your paths. Cosmic collision. Because I'm God and that's what I do. That's what the Lord telling you. But see, you got to hear the Lord instead of all you can hear is you arguing and yelling at the Lord. Where you about to go, baby? Oh, your appointment? All right. All right. I love you. I'll be off here in uh, four minutes. So I'll text you. Call you? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll call you in four minutes. Wife got to go, go get her facial. See what I'm saying? Going to get her facial. Other days when we got our nail done. Um, you see what I'm saying? You got to have you a routine, a self-care routine. Well, you, if you say, hey, all right, it ain't in the budget right now for no facial, but I'm going to go right up here to CVS, Walgreens, Ralph's, and get me to hear face wash, get me to hear moisturizer, get me to hear uh, peel, get me to hear tweezer. Get this here, okay. Get the black hair, okay. Get my own self a facial once a month, a whole face. Wash my face twice a day. You see what I'm saying? That's part of preparation. Okay, I'm gonna keep these nails cut. Put my little clear coat on there if you don't like color. Put your little color on there if you like color. If that ain't in your budget, then you do that. You see what I mean? You have to get prepared. You already independent, but you sitting still. You since that you pay all your bills, you got your car note, you got your rent or your mortgage, you 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 got your health insurance, you pay all your bills, but you still complacent in the three B's. You still not doing the work. And when you start doing that, that work. I'm trying to tell you now, listen to me. You attract something different. You attract something different. If I had six gold teeth, I wouldn't be able to go into the rooms that I could go in now. But when I change, when I grew, if I still were wearing dope boy clothes, I wouldn't be able to go in some of the rooms I could go in now. Even the fact that I got a country accent, that's limiting me. I got, I'm okay with those limits right now, but it's going to come a day to where they're going to want me on national TV worldwide to where I'm going to have to tone my accent down so more people can understand me. Because there's so many people that equate your accent to your education level. I could know more than them. What they make in a year, I can make in a month. It'd be way past them, but they still going to judge. But if I need to get into a certain door, I got to be aware of that. That's knowledge. And I got to be malleable. I got to be able to adjust. It ain't about losing myself. It ain't about doing nothing. It's wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. You got to know how you got to move the way you could get in, the way you got to get in. Then when you get your foot in, you take over. Now you do what you want to do. Now you done gave me my three seasons. When the accent come out, ain't nothing you can do. Now I'm in here now. And now that you now when you see the people ain't got a problem with it. But see, the gatekeeper at the door. Hi, how are you? I'm Tony Gaskins. Yes, great to meet you. Well, I really feel that I can carry this show just because of my ability to think from the top of the dome and to be able now i want to put the little light voice on there i have some bass in my voice now well i really feel i can carry the show because of my ability to think from the top of the dome and just be able to relate to several different people from several walks of life and understanding the caveats and the nuances see i throw a couple words in there and so they hit okay all right this man know what he's talking about then when i get in there Hit him with the accent. Oh, he in there now. And then when the people say, oh, we ain't got no problem with the accent. Like, it's fine. Well, all right. Give him another three seasons. You see what I'm saying? Same thing with your relationship. You got to be able to say, okay, I'm going to have to grow in this area. Even though I'm an amazing woman and I can love this man and the man that I want. He looking at me and he's saying she's not ready because she complacent. She's not growing. And one of them bees or two of them bees, and she need all three bees because I'm working on the three bees. And so, boom, you do that now. Now, when you got him, and he get to know you for you, because he first just looking at you on the outside. When he get to know you for you, when one of them bees change, he know you now. But you got to get prepared to even get to that place. So when you put on them twenty pounds, 
He love you. He know that come from love, good eating and having a child. So now he not judging you. He don't see you as complacent because he saw the process that you got there. Hey, I got to go. God bless you.